In this video, we're going to look through a variety of traps and just kind of explain what they are, what they do, and kind of how they're different, just in case you run into some of these as you're out yard sales or wherever. You'll at least know kind of what you're looking at and if, if you're wanting one type versus another. So first off here, we got the trap that's probably been around the longest that you see in pictures and videos with the mountain men, and that's the, the long spring trap. And in, in particular, this is a double long spring trap simply because it's got two springs, and these are the long springs here on each side, and uh, they've got tension on them, and they compress, and that's what powers the trap. Now, in addition to the double long spring, there are also single long spring traps that just have you know, a single spring for, uh, for operating the trap, for firing the trap, and powering the trap. Another long spring trap that you may run into, you know, just out and about, it's not super common, but in some areas you may be more likely to find it is a, a stop loss trap. And you can see the single long spring here, but it's got this stop loss mechanism. So here's the stop loss trap set. And you can see that it's got the extra arm that is underneath the, the spring. And, and so you can see when the trap initially fires, it catches the animal. But then this, this extra arm is still loaded. It hasn't fired yet. And you can see that it's attached to the chain and this pull pin here. So when the animal does start to pull away, it pulls the pin out. And then this arm comes out and it holds the animal's body and head away from the, the trap, the trap leg and the foot. You don't want to use these for anything bigger than, than uh, mink and muskrat. You don't want to set them where you might catch a coon. Um, it's, it's not designed for coon. It's designed for those smaller animals in situations where they might not drown. So it's a little bit of a different trap that you may see. Sometimes these arms are on this side. Sometimes they're on this side. But if you're out perusing at a junkyard or a yard sale, or not necessarily a junkyard, but an antique store or a yard sale, you may run across these traps. Another little bit different style trap and what, what we see a lot nowadays is these underspring traps. So it, it kind of looks more similar to the coil spring, but um, these underspring's have got this, this spring that's attached to the trap frame underneath the pan and the jaws. And so that gets depressed in order to set the trap. And these are made both with a, a single and there are double underspring traps that wear look look more like our our modern day uh coal spring traps but it, it is a little bit odd it looks like a coal spring trap but you don't see any coils so that's what that is that's just an underspring trap and then we get to you know our run-of-the-mill coal spring traps like we have and that's they range in size and, and vary to catch anything from a, a mink or a a small weasel all the way up to wolves and cougars so uh, you know and it's powered by the coil springs um, these are the most common trap what you'll see most of the time nowadays you can see these as opposed to like a the uh, the single versus double long springs for coil springs you are uh, a lot of traps will come too cold so they just come with the two standard coils but there are some traps, depending on what you're catching or what you're after, that come four coils. So you can see this a uh, number five Bridger that's got four coils. Um, it just makes the trap more powerful uh, for for larger animals. This particular trap, I'm going to catch beavers, beavers and otters with it. But um, these number fives are sometimes set up to trap uh, wolves and wolverines as well up in the north. So that's a that's a rundown of some of the most common foothold traps that you're liable to see when you're out and about. <laughs> 